reindeer moss uh, called that because reindeer eat it. And this is very helpful. It's sort of like an explanation point, exclamation point at the end of the story. Uh, this plant is very old. It has a tremendous life uh, expectancy, if you will, lifespan. And like you, you can kind of see in the picture, there's like one little cluster there and another cluster over here and another one over there. That takes 10 years to grow that cluster. And if you see really sort of mature colonies, for lack of a better word, of reindeer moss, it could be hundreds of years old. You know, if a moose hasn't come by or a reindeer hasn't come by and squashed it or a human or whatever. So it's been around for a while. And what it represents is to get perspective on the continuum of life experience. I love that word, continuum. Um, I hope I have this, the right Scrabble tiles to actually use that someday. Uh, so continuum means you've got a, a line of events and they're all connected. There's nothing that ever happens that's not connected. And so we're, we're at some point in that line and we have our experience and we're like, ah, this is, you know, what's going on? This is terrible. It's saying, well, okay, hold that thought check out the continuum, or at least check out what's gone before, it puts it in a different perspective. So it's holding this space of, yeah, we've been around, we've seen these cycles, we've seen these things happen, we've seen this, uh, you know, come and go. Uh, understanding the continuum of any experience or any event helps you integrate it, understand it. Now, this comes up specifically so far, it's one of our research, research essences, but it's coming up for people who have been displaced, who have, I mean, the biggest and one of the most terrible examples of that is the American Indians. That was the first Holocaust. Um, I can't remember how many million Indians were killed by soldiers displaced, you know, the ones that were left were taken off their land and put on reservations. Well, we could spend the rest of the, of the week talking about how many times that's happened in the world. Uh, and it's still happening, all the Syrian refugees. So it's, it's not only its continuum, but its connection to place. If you have a plant that's been growing in the same place for hundreds of years, it's got a pretty good connection to place. It can help you reconnect if you've been uprooted and taken. The amazing thing about this plant is it's got almost no roots. Interesting signature, almost no roots. It's mostly uh, growing and thriving because of air. It gets fed from the air. So it's not, you, it's not a sequoia tree with these massive roots that's been sitting there for 2,000 years. It's this moss, this carpet that grows on top of the soil and on top of the rocks where you couldn't even get a root in if you wanted to. Yeah. So homelessness, being displaced, uh, being a refugee, uh, in, being an immigrant. Uh, immigration is maybe a little more gentle version of it, but also very, you know, <laughs> challenging um, at times. Nobody's talking about connection to place. You know, being uprooted, being taken away. Some people are voluntarily leaving, but the majority of the people that are refugees didn't do that voluntarily. So it's to reconnect, to understand your experience in, in, in a larger perspective, but to reconnect with the planet wherever you are. And to, uh, you know, feel... Instead of having that be a negative thing, have that be a positive thing. Oh, I get to experience another place. So ultimately, it's saying, well, you're still on the planet Earth. So don't forget that. You know, uh, we, we didn't send you to Mars or Venus or Jupiter. We just 
you were you were you had to come to a different place on the planet Earth. Your friend is the planet Earth. You can have that connection anywhere you are, and you know uh, amplify that connection because you need it because the surroundings are different, people are different, everything else is different. That you're on the same planet.